Hi everyone, welcome to North Star Knife Reviews. Uh, now, you know, I just got done uh, doing an open tag from Williams Knife Life about uh, small um, lockbacks, and that got me thinking. You know, some of us don't just have small knives, we have tiny knives. Uh, and what got me actually thinking about it is I happened to have this in my hand uh, earlier today, um, and it's, it's tiny. So I decided, let's have an open tag. Show me your tiny knives. Um, you know, because size doesn't matter. Well, here, the smaller the better. But um, did set a couple of parameters for myself. And I'd like, you know, if you pick this up, I'd like you to follow through with that. But hey, you know, uh, it's your choice. Um, for me, for the tiny knives, two and a half inches maximum. So two and a half inches or smaller, closed, and no multi-tools. Uh, so you can have more than one blade as long as they're both knife blades. Um, this is to getting rid of things like uh, Victorinox, Swiss Army Knife Classics. Not that I dislike those. I mean, I have a number of them. It's just that would be very easy to throw up, you know, 15 classics and say, well, here you go. I want different stuff. I want things that are not Swiss Army Knife Classics. Uh, two and a half inches or less. And these are what I've got now. I, I think I might have one or two others um, that I just didn't locate, but this is gonna be a lot of them in that size range. So I think about the biggest you're gonna get, and I don't actually have one on here, um, maybe a peanut, although the, I did have one peanut and it was just a little too big. So maybe not even that. But let's start out with this knife that inspired this. This is a very, very small little knife. Uh, and you per might not be able to see the tang stamp on here. Let's see if I can try to get it. Come on. There we go. All right. It's Gießen uh, and Forsthoff, uh, Zollingen, Germany. This, I don't know the exact date on this. Uh, I'm still doing a little research on this. I, I'm hoping to have a review of it uh, specifically up soon, but very tiny little knife. I mean, look at the, the secondary blade on here is three quarters of an inch, you know. Um, tiny little knife, but I think it's really cool. I'm guessing it is from the 30s or 40s, but I'm still doing research on that. Then I have this little hammer brand. Again, a two-bladed knife, two little spear point blades, and this is going to be a pre-World War II hammer brand. Uh, because there, it just says hammer brand. It doesn't have the USA running down the side. So this is prior to World War II. You, know, you have a little sort of bowling pin handle with the easy open notch. And again, you know that that secondary blade. This one's a giant compared to that. This one's an inch long. Um, but I really like the. Oops, I'm sorry. I just knocked my camera. Uh, really nice, like the handles on this. These old swirly handles. Uh, again, this is going to be late 30s to about 1941. I think they're pretty cool. This, and this just barely makes the two and a half inches. You know, it is right at that mark. So this is about as big as you're going to get uh, in this tag at least. This, as you can see, is from Queen Cutlery. This is a number six. Again, two blades, but uh, here we have a pen knife pattern rather than jack knife. Here, let's see, what do we got? Oh, we are moving up in size, an inch and a quarter on that secondary blade. Um, really nice mother of pearl handles. I think this is a really pretty knife, uh, I like it a lot. Then we have a couple of Rough Riders, all right? And you know, Rough Rider has a number of these really tiny knives. Um, this one is just a little, little black pearl um, toothpick. You know, not the most practical thing in the world, maybe, but uh, you know, it's a little fifth pocket knife if you want it. 448 steel, typical Rough Rider stuff. And then this is another Rough Rider. This happens to be a small, tiny trapper. Okay, see so there, you've got your spade blade, and you have your little clip blade. And again. Uh, 448 steel. Oh, can I get the model numbers on here? Uh, I don't see it. Let me see. I, don't, I actually don't know if the model numbers are on this. Um, 
No, it doesn't appear so. So I, I, I'm afraid I can't tell you the model numbers, but um, they're both rough riders, and they probably are still in stock. Don't know. Then I have another little toothpick. This one, again, butts right up to that. Mm, I might even be going over. All right, I think I'm violating my own rule by a tiny fraction of an inch here. Uh, little toothpick. Um, this one is unbranded, so I do not know who made it. I do not know where it was made. Um, I got it in a lot of knives a while back. Um, you know, this sort of cracked ice type of handle. Looks like it's probably, you know, 1940s, maybe 1950s. Um, but just a small little toothpick. Uh, don't know much about it, but still kind of like it. Then this is from CH Knives. And this is just a little, it's like a dog tag. And I've, ha I've had this in another video. I haven't specifically reviewed it, but I do have it in another video. Um, it's just a nice little knife for box opening. Not going to be a slicer at all. You know, it's a chisel grind, pretty obtuse angle. Um, it's got a double detent system to hold it open and closed. Um, just a little knife uh, you could toss in your desk if you needed just something to open packages. This, which I kind of like, is from Kubi. And... It is, you know, just at two and a half inches without the lanyard, and I'm not counting lanyards. Um, this is a little modern folder. Uh, I am not sure of the type of wood that is on this, uh, but again, there is the Kubi brand, and it is a little karambit style blade, liner lock, you can see. Um, you know, it works pretty well. You, I can't really flip it out, but I can slow roll it. Um, and, you know, a little bit small. Uh, if you've got big hands, it's probably going to be a little hard to manipulate. But, you know, I think it's kind of a cool little knife. Uh, again, nice little package opener. So, there's that. Save this one for last. Uh, this, again, was, I think, part of the same lot that this one came in. It was all... Um, goldish, yellowish, white color, covered knives, excuse me, colored knives. Uh, this is Swank, which I think was a budget jewelry manufacturer or manufacturer of you know, like men's accessories back whenever. And I guess technically uh, this may violate my rule as well because this does have, this is not really a knife blade. So this one probably shouldn't be in here, but I uh, forgot about this little extra blade until now. Um, so this would have been like on a watch fob or something like that. And then this little keychain knife. Okay. See, this is Cruz Brothers Elevator. This was my dad's elevator, uh, 15th anniversary. I want to say they started their elevator in 1949 or 50. So this would have been 64 or 65, I'm guessing. And here... Uh, the single blade is just a little over an inch long, and the cutting edge right about an inch. Um, you know, cheap little knife. These were not uh, any great knife, but this was actually one that my dad had. Uh, you can see it says USA. I have no idea who the maker is. My guess, just from the these style of bolsters, is probably Colonial or one of their sub-brands. Um, but uh, I don't know that for sure. Anyway, so... There you have it, a collection of tiny knives, less than two and a half inches, uh, preferably no multi-tools, no Swiss Army classics, uh, just I want to see what you got out there, the smaller the better. All right, thank you very much for watching, hope you found this interesting, hope people pick up on the tag, y'all have a good day, I will catch you next time.